Good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome on behalf of the Society of Antiquaries. Um, I'm Martin Millet. I'm the incoming president of the Society, and it's my pleasure to be uh, introducing uh, this afternoon's proceedings uh, and chairing the first couple of papers. Um, this uh, session on intertwined legacies, the legacies of colonialism and empire, has been organised by our communications and events manager, Danielle Wilson Higgins, and our governance officer, Linda Grant. Linda will be uh, delivering the last of the short papers this afternoon. We're extremely grateful to them for putting this really exciting uh, programme together. Before we uh, go into the programme and listen to um, our fascinating panel of speakers, um, I'd just like to say a little bit about the society uh, to place the uh, proceedings this afternoon in context. Now, the society um, was founded a um, very long time ago in 1707, and uh, since then has uh, changed uh, in a number of ways from a small uh, gentleman's meeting club, uh, meeting in a pub on the Strand, uh, to one of be one of the uh, foremost uh, institutions concerned with the material evidence of the past, um, archaeology, history, history of art, and so forth um, in the UK. And it's made up of uh, an elected fellowship um, who are all passionate and interested in uh, different aspects of the material past. Um, the society's constantly changing and if you look back through its history um, its emphasis uh, its approaches have changed and that's one of the strengths that we uh, respond to um, current interests and current needs as well as respecting the traditions of the past and that gives really the context for this um, event this afternoon um, anyone uh, living in the western world today uh, will be intensely aware of the debates and interests in the way that um, our past has been presented and is used by different groups within society. And the material aspects of the past uh, really reflect this. And the society, understanding some of the debates that have been going on in the uh, contemporary world, um, has itself been reflecting on its relationship with uh, heritage and histories, um, both in our own collections and in the collections, thoughts and writings um, of uh, people across the world, including uh, our fellows. And this has um, encouraged us to think um, how we can better address uh, these issues and uh, better involve ourselves in debates that make um, the past relevant to today. And one of the ways uh, that we have um, been doing that is since 2020, uh, we have had um, a small group uh, forming an equality and diversity working group um, who have been thinking about how the society should think about these issues and change and develop its practice to reflect contemporary social needs. And I'm delighted to see that uh, Natalie Cohen and Amara Thornton from that group um, are here this afternoon and will be um, chairing bits of the proceedings. Their group has been working hard uh, since 2020 to bring forward ideas and in a couple of weeks time their proposals will be coming to uh, the Society's Council for uh, consideration about how we change and develop ourselves uh, in the future. And um, this afternoon's uh, presentations, in a sense, uh, prefigure some of the sorts of things that we're uh, hoping to develop uh, as the Society moves forward through this century. And uh, in particular, this afternoon's event uh, will be linked with two further ones planned for the autumn of this year, looking at um, intertwined legacies in the uh, UK, 
And then in the spring of 2022, one that looks at the international perspectives. And I hope that um, these uh, reflections and discussions um, will engage um, not only people who are currently uh, interested and engage in the study of the past, but also show how um, the past is relevant to today and draw in a much wider spectrum of um, society to engage with these ideas and uh, this material uh, as the society uh, moves forward. So we've got a very rich and warm uh, conference this afternoon, some um, fascinating topics. Um, I have to uh, apologise myself because I'm only going to be able to be here for about half the afternoon and in a sense this reflects the um, vibrancy of this topic because there's an, another event in Cambridge that I'm engaged with on the legacies of enslavement um, that clashes with this afternoon's session so my apologies to the speakers later on for not being here. But before we move to the first uh, speaker, um, can I just make a couple of housekeeping announcements? Firstly, um, the speakers are going to talk for 20 to 25 minutes, and we've got five minutes for questions at the end. Uh, what I would ask people to do is, if you've got a question, can you type it into the chat function on Zoom, and the person who's chairing that uh, session, we'll pick up questions and give them to the speaker uh, in that five minutes discussion uh, at the end of the paper. Um, we're running from now until 4.10 when there will be um, a break until five o'clock. Uh, the webinar will remain open during that break so you don't need to uh, sign out and then sign back in again. We will resume at 5 p.m. Uh, with the keynote paper uh, on uh, why representation matters from Rashka Dave. Uh, 